introduction. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. Am I on on this one? Am I? Yep. Okay. Thanks. You can switch this one off. Right from the onset, may I actually state that before I preach and as I preach, I will solicit your prayers every time I mount this pulpit because the warfare has gone from being a secret warfare to become an open warfare. The Bible is very clear on all these things. The devil is not joking. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And I'm grateful tonight we have made it to this campaign as we kick off. I know we have very few days to preach. Pastor, you know I thought we were going to preach every day, but that's okay. I'm sure every, every presentation would be different and it would be a different one all the time. And tonight, as we present, I'm going to ask that God himself will take over. And as we present, I want to also say right from the onset, I believe in prayer. Prayer not only changes things, but prayer changes people. Prayer heals, prayer moves mountains. I want everybody who has got a prayer request by the end of this service, if you have a prayer request, there's a prayer box there. There's also a question box in case you have a question. There are papers writing. You can, you can pass around the papers if people would be so kind. You can write your prayer request. We will pray over them. We will continue praying for each other. I believe by the end of this, um, by the end of this campaign, somebody will be experiencing a miracle. I've experienced miracles myself in my life. And I know God is about to work a miracle for somebody in here under the sound of my voice. And I will also ask that we invite friends, we invite relatives, we invite all the people that we know. So that we can not only benefit, but they can also benefit. Hello, somebody. We are grateful tonight that God has given us another chance. And as he has given us another chance, we will start right from the origin where the, everything began. Before the beginning began, somebody began the beginning. Before the beginning began, somebody began the beginning. Because that means there is an author and a source for everything. Well, I've heard so many stories, Pastor. Somebody tells me that this world is a result of a Big Bang theorem. Well, we could prove that. We could try and prove that from Scripture today. Somebody tells me that the, the source of life comes from the sea. But you see, I, I read somewhere in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So as I'm looking around, I'm thinking to myself, well, as these things are happening and everybody is saying all sorts of things, what does God say about it? Well, I have to tell you, our source is not my brain, but our source is scripture. If it's not in the word, it's not worth to be heard. And so I would encourage everybody to bring their Bibles with them alongside. Every time they come down, they bring their Bibles. And so as you bring your Bibles, we will open Scripture and let Scripture explain Scripture so that we will not do the talking, but God does the talking. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we ask you this evening that as we start this campaign, that God, you may be the author and the finisher of our faith. It is your time and it is your time. Lord, please be seen, be heard, and be glorified. There's somebody who has walked out evidently who is not looking well. Father, in the name of Jesus, you who promised in Psalm 103 verse 3 that you will forgive all our sins and heal all diseases. Whatever it is, we match it out in the name of Jesus. This is your territory and this is your time. Do what you said you're going to do. Father, we are in your hand. This is your moment. This is your time. Amen and amen. Today we are approaching the bench. Presumably, I will be presenting a case for creation. As we approach the bench, we need to present a case for creation and investigate from the good book, whether it's by chance or by design. By chance or by design. Tonight we will discover the mysteries of life. Let's suppose that you lived along the beach. One morning you get up early and decide to walk along the sandy shore. 
I don't know whether this is the beach from uh, Barbados. I don't know whether it is from Jamaica or whether it's from Cape Town, South Africa, or whether it's Brighton. But one thing I know is it's a sandy beach. Not Brighton. Brighton has got a what? Yeah? It's ruled out? Tell me where is the sandy beach in England. Cornwall, right. It looks like other people have been to Cornwall. But as you walk along this beach, you know, early in the morning, and you decide to take a walk along the sandy shore, and as you take this walk, it is a magnificent scene. The rising sun's rays dance off the water. <laughs> as you can see, waves are crashing on the shore. As you walk down the beach in quietness, you notice a set of footprints in the sand in front of you. Then you notice a second and third set of footprints. You look as far as you can down and you look and you see that there is more and more footprints going down the beach. What do all these footprints tell you? That means somebody has been there before. Hello, somebody. That means somebody has walked that, that road before you were there. Well, I got news for you. This simply says that although you cannot see anyone, someone was there before you. Somebody walked down the beach before you. Let me ask you another question. If you stand outdoors, ha, look at that beautiful scenery. Stand outdoors and look around, what do you see? There's grass, trees, hills or mountains, flowers, streams or lakes of water, maybe animals if you please. And as you stand there, what are you standing on? As you stand there, what are you standing on? You see that as you are standing, yes, you're standing on the ground, the surface of the earth. But then, when you look up, what do you see? When you look up, what do you see? In the daytime, you might see the sun. The bright sun that shines so bright, maybe from the, the, the beautiful island of Jamaica or the beautiful island of, 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 of Cape Town or the beautiful island of, 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 of Barbados or St. Vincent or another island that you could think of where there is beautiful sunshine all throughout the year or this could be Zimbabwe or wherever. But you look at the sun in its beauty. With its sunshine, it's shining so bright. The rays are hitting your skin and you're absorbing that vitamin D. And you look and think to yourself, who put that sun in place? In the daytime, you could see the clouds. At night, if you're fortunate enough, you could see thousands upon thousands of stars that are flung in space. And you can see the moon. And you ask yourself the question, just how did the moon get up there? How did you get there? Who made you? Some say the life began just by simple cells in the sea, Pastor. I don't know about that. Because these are theories that people come up with. So we need to explore and find out a bit more. Simple cells in the sea, those cells grew into tiny living things made of many cells. Then those living things changed over millions of years into little creatures that could move from sea to dry land where they grew legs. Millions of people, well, millions of people all through time have believed something entirely different about how the universe, the earth, and all living creatures came to exist. They believe that the creator God made it all. But which God is the question? Which God are we talking about? People worship many gods. As you can see, they worship Buddha, Muhammad, Shinto, the gods of the Hindus and others. The followers of these gods claim that theirs is the supreme God. But do you know that of all these claims that theirs is the supreme God, that all of the gods in the world, the only one, of them that ever claimed to be the creator of everything. And that is the God of the Holy Bible. No other God has claimed that they created anything. Only the God of the Bible has claimed that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And so tonight we are going to find out what we can from the Bible about the God of all creation. This God, if you see a house, do you ever assume somehow that the house just made itself? 
No. You realize that somebody built that house. If you see a road, do you think that that road just came by evolution in there? No. Somebody took their time to make that road. And roads and houses are far more simple than different worlds, galaxies, and people. These are more complex things we're talking about. And so to assume that these things came into existence by themselves is defying the logic that ever exists in this whole entire world. And we will begin to learn about God who claims to be the designer and the creator of everything. Let's start with what his book, the Holy Bible, says about his work in creating this earth and our universe. First, let's look at what happened on day one. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the what? And the earth. Then God said, let there be light, and there was what? Light. Come on, everybody. I need you to walk with me now. Move with me. And then God said, let there be light, and there was what? Light. Yeah. Well, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from darkness. You see, this is what God said. Then God said, let there be light, and there was what? Light, and God saw the light, and it was good, and God divided the light from what? Darkness. So the evening and the morning were the what? First day. In other words, the way they counted days was evening, then morning. That becomes the first what? Day. In other words, on the first day, what, what did God create on the first day? On the first day, God created this earth. He created light. That is a very good answer. And he began the cycle of days and nights. So on the first day of the week, God created this earth. He created light and they began the cycle of days and nights. Then God said, well, I'm going ahead of myself. And then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. Wow. You can imagine what this world looked like before the, 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 the magnificent hand of God had touched it. He divided the waters from the waters. And it was so. And God called the firmament what? Heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. On day two, what did God make? God made the sky above us. That's true, Elder. And separated the water on the earth from the water in the clouds and the sky. That's God. On the first day, God created the earth. He created the light and began the cycle of days and nights. On the second day, God made the sky above us and separated the water on the earth and the water in the clouds and the sky. Then God said, let, there, let the waters under the heavens and be gathered together in one place and let the dry land what? appear. And it was so. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass and the herb that yields what? Seed. Let, let, let it bring up the herb that yields what? Seed. That means that God is already creating life. If a seed brings another seed, that means when a seed starts, that means it's going to develop into something big. That means God is already creating life. In his creation, God is already manifesting that he is a good God. <laughs> that he is a powerful God. This God that we worship is a good God. Whatever he created, he created it for a purpose. Look at your toe. Look around you if you're missing the small toe. You, 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 you will not be able to stand. You might look at it and think it's insignificant. But when you're missing that, you are off balance. That means that this God is a designer. That means whatever he created, he created it for a purpose and he is a good God. He is the grand designer. <laughs> Hello somebody. This earth did not come into existence by mere collision of atoms and molecules. But God in the heavens, the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the what? Come on now somebody. 
I need help up in here. Pray for me. But I need you to say amen as well. It only means I'm in agreement with what the Bible is saying. And so, verse 11. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Genesis 1, 13. So that means, and the fruit, the trees, the yields fruits according to its kind, whose seed in itself on earth, and it was so. So that means that on the third day, God made the dry land to appear, created the seas, and covered the earth with plant life. Day four, then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. And so, and let them be signs and seasons for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Well, I've got good news for you. Because, and God, when he looked at it, he saw and he said that it was what? Wow. Everything that God created, he said it was good. You see, I've come to realize that there are people who look at themselves. And they say, oh, I'm ugly. Oh, this and this is happening. But when God created, he said everything is. Well, because of sin, things started happening. Our form began to disintegrate. I'm sure if you would have looked at the form of Adam and everybody else, they had all the six packs and the muscle definitions all over the place. And everybody was looking symmetrical. But you see, because of sin, our bodies started degenerating. Because of disease, everything was infiltrated. Well, I've got good news for you. The God of creation is able. The God of creation is the designer. The God of creation can redesign if he designed in the first place. Hello, somebody. Well, let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light on the earth. And it was what? And it was so. So the evening, and God saw that it was what? Good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, well, on that fourth day, we realized that. On the fourth day, God caused the sun and the moon to appear in the sky. So he created the what? The stars. Then God said, let the waters abound with abundance of living what? Creatures. And let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of heaven. Well, you see those birds flying. You think that they just came from nowhere, from another outer space. But these birds came from somewhere. God created them. Hallelujah, somebody. I like this because saw so the ground in the evening. Saw so the evening and the morning were the fifth what? Fifth day. Then God said, well, on that fifth day, that means that he created the birds and everything that was flying in the sky. Well... Now everybody is flying on aeroplanes. Where did they get the idea of flying? They got it from the birds. Hmm. Pastor, they would see the birds flying and they would think, wow, what if we make something that flies intercontinental? And so the right brother sat down because they were inspired by seeing the what? The birds. How beautiful and how marvelous are your works of creation, oh God. That would even inspire the Wright brothers to start building an aeroplane. What did they build it from? The materials of things that God had created. You see, many times we think we are so smart as human beings. But we are not even creating raw materials. We are using raw materials from what God has already or designed and what he has already put on this earth. So who is, more, who is cleverer than the other person? God or man? Hmm. Do you think that God did not know that there were going to be aeroplanes? If he wanted, you would have created aeroplanes. But this God is good because he gives us that chance. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to his what? To his kind and cattle and creeping thing. I don't know about the generation that is coming up these days. We, we are used to eating the meat, but have we ever seen the cattle or or have we ever seen the cows? It'll be good one time for, for us to take our young ones to, to go and see where the cows are. Take them to a farm or somewhere where they see the living creatures. So they can appreciate the beauty and what God has made. The cattle and the creeping thing and the beasts of the earth. 
each according to its kind and it was what wow i like the definition pastor that he would actually say each according to its what that means that god is not mixed up god knew that there was a man and then there was a woman god knew that this is an elephant and god knew that this is a what a giraffe and he knew that this was a camel god was not mixing up things god made everything according to his what his kind and it was so let us make men hallelujah somebody <laughs> this is where i start getting excited he said let us make men in our image according to our what likeness that means that we are a direct image of what god looks like you want to look at god and think about god look at yourself in the mirror most probably because of sin we have degenerated so much but god would also look just like you and me so think about it our god is good he says let us make man in our image according to our what likeness that means whatever i look like it is a direct image of what god would look like it might not look like exactly what he is now because of what we have gone through but god saw that the only creature that is worthy to look like me is mankind that means there's something special about you and me today that means when god created you created you with a purpose you see what did he say let them have dominion over the what the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the what the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth that means god gave dominion to a human being why do you think that you can tame an elephant why do you think that people can tame camels why do you think we can tame horses because God made everything in subjection to man. That's how he created it. Why do you think we can tame all these things? Why do you think we have to eat from the earth? And the earth brings forth seed and food and we eat from it. Why? Because everything else that was created by God was in subjection to man. But man ha, was created in subjection to the only God. Let me tell you something. God gave dominion. In other words, he gave responsibility to man. So I have to tell you this evening that when God gives responsibility, he also gives responsibility to us even now. Let us not dodge responsibilities from our family. Let us not dis dodge responsibilities from our, our schools. Let us not dodge responsibility because when God has created, he created with a what? with the purpose hello somebody so God created man in his own image and in the image of God he created what him that's God then God said well we have already been through that so he created man in his own image in the image of God he created them and he created them what male and female he created them love this about God that means the male and the female species are the same. I know you didn't like that. That means the male and the female species no difference except in the anatomy and the physiology and maybe the different roles and responsibilities that God designed. But there is nothing different about us. We are all equal in front of the living God. He created them male and what? Female. Then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was what? Very good. Did you see the trend that God was doing it here? He was creating and he was saying and he saw that it was good. And he created on the second day, he said it was good. And on the third day, he said it was good. On the fourth day, he said it was? On the fifth day, it was? On the sixth day, it was very good. Come on now. That means in totality, everything, when it comes in, when it comes together, God says it is very what? Good. That means when God looked at his works of creation from day one up to day six, he says this is 
very good. But that is not the end of what God said. Day seven, saw the ground, saw the evening and the morning with the what? Sixth day. Wow, look at that. What a beautiful sight to behold. And day seven, on the seventh day, God's work of creation was what? Done him, the great engineer, the great intelligent designer who brought us into being. On the seventh day, God's work of creation was done. So he what? Rested and he set aside the seventh day as a Sabbath day of rest. How do we know? Come on now, come with me to Genesis chapter 2 verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were what? Were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and what? And made. Something about that day that God blessed it. He sanctified it because in it he also what? Rested from all his work which God had created and what? So in other words, I'm sure this is the day when he was reflecting upon the events from day one up to day six. Everything was playing like a, like a video in his mind and he was looking at everything that was together now and he was thinking, wow, this is very good. God is wonderful. God is awesome. Him, the creator of everything. You see? Let's have a brief look at how God created this earth and everything in it, including we, the human beings. I want us to take a closer look and just what an amazing designer and creator he really is. The human body itself, it gives us evidence of this grand designer. The human anatomy and the physiology, it gives us evidence of how this guy we call God is so great that he would create. Evidence of design, and the designer. I want you to consider just one part of the human body, the eye. Scientists tell us that the delicate design of the eyes, cornea, and lens make them even the most advanced cameras on earth seem like, like, like a child's toy by comparison. You see, when you look at When you look at that, is that a video? Wow. That is amazing. Praise play. That's all right. <clears throat> but when we look at the eye, if you compare it to the camera that is there today, the camera does not even match what the eye can do. Because the eye changes light into messages the brain understands in ways even the most advanced science laboratories on earth can't reproduce. The camera only takes pictures, but it doesn't send any messages to the brain. This is how good and how great our God is. Brain cells change these messages into the miracle of seeing something nothing else on earth comes even close to doing. The human eye gives evidence of a loving creator who wants us to see the beauties that he has made in all the universe. No wonder the psalmist wrote. Hmm. This is where I love what the psalmist writes. He says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully what? Made. He looks at himself and says, God, how is it that I can walk? How is it that I can dance? <laughs> how is it that I can run? He looks at himself and he says, for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. He looks at himself and looks at the digestive system, how he can eat today and tomorrow he can still eat and be able to reproduce and have babies and everything. He is saying, God, I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't look at yourself and think that, well, everybody else looks at me and they say, I'm not the best looking apple in the, in the, in the, 
in the basket but tell yourself if God has made me he took his time to create me in his image this God David says I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully what made this is a good God and so David in some of his Psalms he starts praising God and he starts telling everybody about how good God is and you see he says marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well David he looked at it when he was heading the ship when he was looking after the ship he looked at how beautiful uh, the grounds were he looked at how the pastures were green and he looked at how the mountains were in place and he looked at the brooks of the waters and he said wow God this is beautiful I don't know about you but I'm starting to believe in this God of creation because I'm already seeing the trail from the beginning anybody else can bring a theory I can't trust it from the beginning but I'd rather trust something that is a source and that is credible and this is the only God who created the heavens and the earth hallelujah somebody human eye gives evidence of a loving creator who wants us to see the beauties that he has made in the universe that is why the psalmist writes this psalm and you see as he writes the psalm you you realize and you ask yourself but what about the rest of the universe what evidence do we have that God of the design was at work in creating the entire universe everybody else is talking about Neptune everybody else is talking about Mars everybody else is talking about all these continents and all these universes galaxies what evidence do we have that God of the design was created the entire universe come with me to the book of Isaiah come with me to the book of Isaiah what book did I say everybody the book of Isaiah Isaiah the gospel prophet challenges all of us to take our eyes off the little things around us and focus them on what God has done in the sky can I get some water please if that's okay and he says in Isaiah 40 verse 26 lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things who brings out their horse by what oh come on now let me repeat that again lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things who brings out their horse by what that means they are numbered <laughs> that doesn't just mean that he knows how many they are but he knows which number has come in hello somebody this is the God that I worship he does not know only how much is there but he knows everything that is there by name that means he knows that Dodana exists he knows that somebody in here exists he knows that elder Sili exists he knows Elosile exists. He knows that there's somebody there. He knows that Pastor Koza is in existence. He knows even our needs. He knows our wants. He knows the needs of the young person. Somebody in here will be saying, oh, well, you might not know the challenges that we as young people face today, but God knows everything by name. Hello, somebody. The God who created, he knows everything and he knows even the number he knows you are the first one he knows you're the second born he knows you're the third born he is the God who created that means he knows your life he directs your steps steps of a good man are ordered by God thank you pastor appreciate it. this is what the Bible says he calls them all by what by name by the great by the greatness of his might and the strength of his what of his power that means in his hand lies strength in his hand lies power in his hand there is power there is strength there is everything that you ever need not one is what wow even the hairs on your head are numbered not mine I ain't got none <laughs> but I'm sure the little that I have left <laughs> he knows which number has fallen <laughs> when he says the hairs on your head are numbered <laughs> he is saying that when number 250 falls down <laughs> he knows <laughs> when number 350 falls out of line he knows um, that means even when you're going through what you're going through today the challenges that you face today God knows we serve a good God the Creator God knows about everything the Creator God is good the Creator God knows everything by name and by number hello 
Not even one is what? Hmm, God. Have you ever looked up in the sky at the countless stars above you? We don't see much of them in England, but there are some days that you're privileged to see them. Have you ever tried to count them? I tried. I tried. But pastor, before I could even move from one little section, I was getting dizzy. Because I could not even number them and count them. But do you know what? Have you ever wondered where they could all have come from and marveled at how many they are? God used this illustration. And it helps us comprehend a little better at the immensity of it all. He once took Abraham, the father of, Arab, of the Arab and the Jewish races, outdoor and challenged him to count the stars. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 5. He said to him, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you're able to number them. So shall your descendants be. Hello. That means there are billions, billions of stars out there. The God that we worship has put them in space. The God that we worship has put them in place. This God he knows everything and in numbers. He knows it by name. Recently an astronomer said, you know what this astronomer said? He said, if you could count all the grains of sand on the seashores in the world, you would have approximately the same number of grains of sand as there are stars in the heavens. So in other words, if I get you a bucket of sand, Mr. Seal, if I get you a bucket of sand, <laughs> are you going to be able to count the little grains one by one? I will leave you there for years with just one bucket. But imagine when you walk on the beach, on that beautiful beach of, uh, of Jamaica. One day I wish to go to Jamaica. <laughs> Get me a ticket somewhere. <laughs> Imagine walking on that beach. You're able to count the number of grains of sand. That means that is the number of the stars. Do you know what? Nobody can number them. But God can. No other God has claimed that he can except the God of heaven. Imagine this God. He's a good God. You see, don't even try to do it. Because you won't be able to do it to count it. Is there any wonder why King David said in Psalms 8 verse 3 to 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have what? Wow, that is a powerful word right there. Which you have what? Wow. Which you have ordained. I think I'm running out of battery here. It's not responding as much as it was. What is man that you're mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. Of all things that God has made, this God, he is mindful of the human being. David is saying, of all these things that you have created, I don't count myself as worthy that you are mindful of me. Remember, it's David who says in the book of Psalms 121, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor... What is me? What is slouchers that you're mindful of them? What is... Who am I that you're mindful of me, O oh God? When I look at all these things, 
I look around and I say to, say to myself, God, you are awesome. God, you are wonderful. God, you're still working miracles in my life. God, I thankful. I'm thankful of you. God, when I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers and the moon and the stars which you have ordained, well, who is I that you're mindful of me? Well, have you ever wondered if a powerful God who rules and sustains such a vast universe is actually concerned with us and our problems here on earth? Yes, Jesus said, not even a sparrow falls to the ground that God does not notice. Matthew 10 verse 31. I said if it's not in the book, it's not worth to be heard. We will consider everything from the scripture today. And as we consider everything from the scripture, I ask us to pray about it. So that this scripture can be put in our minds, so that our minds can be fortified. As we learn from scripture, we want the Holy Spirit to shed light into everything that we are learning. So here it says, so don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Hello somebody. Ha -ha. Well, well, well. That means if he watches over the sparrow, I know he's watching over me. <laughs> that means if the birds of the air are fed every day, that means I will be fed every day. Hello, somebody. You know, some people have started to doubt whether God is in existence. But I've got to tell you that God is still watching over us. You know, I went for eight months, Pastor, without a job. But you know what? God looked after me. Hello. God took care of me. The singer says, God will take care of you through every day and all the way. He will take care of you. I kept on preaching. Every time I would preach in a place, some elderly lady would walk up to me or somebody out there would just walk up to me and say, I spoke to Jehovah. Last night as I was speaking to God, he told me to give you this envelope you needed. Look at them and say, thank you so much. Give them a hug. I don't even open it. Sometimes I'll open it on my way home or I'll open it when I'm home. Sometimes the envelope will be full of 20 pound notes, 50 pound notes, 100 pounds, 500 pounds. But God took care of me. Why? Because if the sparrows do not fall from the ground, I do not doubt that God will take care of me. I do not doubt that God will take care of you. God is able. If he's taking care of the birds of the air, he can take care of you. He can take care of me. Well, long story short, I got a job now. Thank you, Jesus. You see, all those benefits, as soon as the job came, to show you that it's a miracle, God started, the, 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 the benefits stopped. <laughs> it was like Elijah by the brook of Sharon. God took care of him whilst he was there. <laughs> but as he left, he told him to go to the widow of Zerophite. And from there, everything else was history. The raven did not show up anymore because God finished his job. Let me tell you something. God will take care of you all the way. He'll take care of me. He is the one who created me. You see, he says in Matthew 10 verse 30, but the very hairs of your head are all what? Oh Lord have mercy. Who's got the most hair in here? I don't know. Maybe the sister down there, she got most hair. You know, I don't know. You, you've got most hair. To count the strands of hair on your head, hello, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be very difficult. But he sees the hair of your head are numbered. Wow, including mine. They're all numbered. You and me and daughter and I are in the same boat. Our hairs are not numbered. No matter how sparsely <laughs> populated it is, the hairs are what? Number, but this is a good God. What right does God of the Bible have to claim that everyone should worship Him exclusively? The God of Bible and Christianity claims that He is entitled to our worship and devotion because He's the Creator God. If He claims that He is the Creator God, that means He's the Creator and He does deserve our worship. Do you not agree? Because He has created and then He deserves our worship. When John, one of His disciples, and the writer of the Bible's last book of Revelation was in vision in the Isle of Patmos. He was shown a scene in heaven's throne room. Notice what he saw. Notice what he saw here. The 24 elders fall down before him who sit on the throne and worship him who made, uh, 
who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Well, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and there they were created. For you created all things and by your will they exist and we were created. That means the 24 elders they bowed down and they started worshiping him who made the heavens and the earth. They actually acknowledged that he's the creator God. There is another piece of evidence for us. Ladies and gentlemen, him who lives forever, him who is worthy of our praise, the 24 elders before the throne, there they are praising and worshiping him because he's the creator. This is the same reason we should worship God of heaven above. He's the one who made the world and all of us. But you might ask, what other evidence do we have that God is the creator? God himself tells us that there is evidence all around us that he is the maker. Well, come with me now to the book of Romans. What book did I say? The book of Romans chapter 1 verse 20. His eternal what? Power and deity has been clearly perceived in things that have been made. That means all nature attest to the fact that God is the creator. Hello? His eternal power and deity have been clearly perceived in the things that have been what? Made. Even his eternal power and the God has. Well, since creation, there's been evidence in all created things that God is the maker of all things. Just like the footprints of the sand. We knew someone has been there even if we had never seen that person. And when you see all things around you, that had to be created by somebody. Those things are like footprints that tell you someone must exist who made all things. God the Father, as the Bible calls him, was not alone in his work of creation. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, we read in Genesis it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Well, in the beginning was the what? John 1 verse, uh, verse 1. He say, in the beginning, well, when I want John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That means the Word went, underwent uh, uh, a transformation from, becoming the, from being the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was? Well, if you read further, that verse will actually tell you the Word of creation was Jesus himself. God was not alone when he was making this. God the Father was with the Son. And he was also with the Holy Ghost. We have actually read Romans 1.20 which told us about the deity. See, God the Father, as the Bible calls him, was not alone when he made this well. He was in the beginning with God. Well, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was nothing made. That was what? Made. If you read further, it says, Then the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and what? Truth. This is the God that we worship. You see? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That constitutes the Godhead. They were together when they were making and creating this world. They were together when they cooperated with the Father to create everything. You see, everybody was present. So, if you read the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 9, it says, Of the mystery which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through who? Jesus Christ, every good and perfect gift that, that man has ever had or will ever have come into being as the creator gives the human race all of the blessings available. That means Jesus is the only medium which we can receive this grace. Let me tell you something. Created all things.
creation. If he's the gateway to creation, that means he's the gateway to recreation. Hello? Now, I'm about to close now. About to close now. But not only did God make man in his image and give him a beautiful universe to live in, but he also, he's also mindful of man's needs. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due what? Season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Psalms 145 verse 16. Let's take a look at just a few of the ways God cares for the needs of his creatures. Consider the water that you drink. It is older than the pyramids and as old as the hills. Water may be polluted by chemicals. It may be polluted by the chemicals or waste, but let the sun evaporate. Let the, let the sun evaporate or lift it up into the atmosphere. And it becomes what? Clean and usable again and again. Distributed by the rain, dew, or snow. What a tremendous water system God designed. Well... There is God's great power plant in the sky, our sun. Think for a moment. Just think for a moment. If the sun were a little bigger or a little closer to earth, our oceans would boil away. If the sun were just a little smaller or a little further away, our atmosphere would freeze. Either way, life could not exist on earth. And one thing I know for sure, in Job chapter, but God but God not only created all things, He sustains all things. The air we breathe is a gift of God, the Bible says. Let me take you to the book of Job. The book of Job, Job chapter 12, verse 10. In whose hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. That means this God designed the universe and He knew just the right formula for the air we breathe to sustain life and the health, and the health on earth. He knew the right amount of nitrogen. He knew the right amount of oxygen. He knew the right amount of argon and the carbon dioxide to mix into the atmosphere that suddenly couldn't just happen by accident. God created. That means this God who created the birds. There is no end to the wonders in our natural world, no end to God's care for his creatures. Think of the migration of birds, one of the greatest puzzles of nature. Birds are migrating from one place to the other thousands of miles. How do they know? If it's not the master designer himself, well, our God is a good God. How can the birds that weigh less than an ounce navigate thousands of miles non-stop to a destination they've never seen? Come on. This is not an accident. How could fish find stream where they began to leave? One... Where, they, where their lives began 1,200 miles across unmapped ocean. How did they learn to know when and where to go? Who taught the honeybee, you know, to start making honey? Who taught the honeybee? Well, Who is the mastermind behind it all? Job tells us in Job chapter 12, verse 7. But now ask the beast and they which teach you, and the birds of the air, and they will tell you, oh, speak to the earth, and it will teach you. And the fish of the sea will explain to you. Well, who among all, the, who among all these does know that the hand of the Lord has done this? Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, not we ourselves. We are all his people. And the sheep of his what? Pasture. Our sovereign Lord. You have made heavens and the earth by your great power outstretched, by your great power outstretched arm and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Is there anything too hard for God? Well, nothing. Is your life in a mess? Doesn't it just give you peace? Peace of mind to know that God can handle everything in the universe and in your personal life. No problem is too small to God of the galaxies. God knows everything. He even knows it all ahead of time. Well, are you believed? God knew that it was going to happen. 
Are you experiencing financial problems? God knew that you'd be in this position this time. God knows everything. He says in Isaiah chapter 14, well, 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 Isaiah chapter 46 verse 9, I'm God and there's none like who? Like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done. Well, this is the God that we worship. What peace and confidence we can have knowing that nothing can happen to us. That is too hard for God to take care of. But best of all, God is love. God is what? Don't be lied to. The God that we serve is a loving God. The God that we serve is a good God. He is love. And John 16 verse 27 tells us that for the Father himself what? Loves you. Experiencing challenges in home. Experiencing challenges whether from your parents or from your marriage. God himself loves you. That's good enough. He will work it out from there. This God talking about. Does it not surprise you that a mighty God who created and sustained such a colossal, colossal complete universe could be, concerned, could be concerned about you and me? It is staggering to contemplate God's unlimited power. His deep wisdom and his ability to be everywhere. But love is something we can understand. And there's nothing in all the world that can separate us from God. Wow. This is the God that we worship. Ladies and gentlemen, Romans 8 verse 38. I'm about to conclude this thing. It says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, no angels, no principality, no powers, no things present, no things to come. Wow. This is Paul who is writing. And it says, no height, no depth, no any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. This is the God who created, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Well, imagine the population, whether you're black, you're white, you're, you're yellow, you're orange, but this God created all of us. Whether you're from India or whether you're from Antigua, whether you're from Africa or whether you're from America, God created all of us. And all of us, God loves. Yes, I've loved you with an everlasting love, God says. And this God, the Lord is good and his love endures what? Forever. The God who created is the same God who loves. That means he doesn't create every, anything that he doesn't love. The Lord is good and his love endures what? Forever. I'm coming to the conclusion now. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of a womb? No, God cannot forget his children. Let me ask the mothers in here. Would you ever forget about your child, no matter how naughty they are? Would you? Never. Why? Because you love them. They are your child. That is us. If you, as human beings, with sin as we are, can love our children like we do, how much more the Creator God who created us? Well, though she may forget, I will not forget you, God says. Well, see, I have engraved you on the palm of my hand. You are in God's arms. That means God loves you. God loves me. He has written your name on the palm of his hand. He knew that you were going to be wedding. He knew that you will be having trouble today. He knew that you will be having problems on another day. But God will take care of you. If you pray to him, you believe in the God of the creator. You worship him, he will take care of you. Well, these are the patriarchs that have gone before us. Well, one thing I know. Even the disciples themselves, they knew about this God who loved. He who has seen me has seen the Father, Jesus said. It is Jesus, remember we said, he is the gateway. If he's the gateway of creation, the agent of creation, that means he's the gateway of recreation. Somebody's life is messed up. Somebody is crying. Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, I've messed up in my life. Lord, I've made many mistakes. So have I. Let me tell you something. Our God loves us. The one Jesus. He says, he who has seen me, seen the Father. That means he wants all his children to come unto him. This God is able, he's willing to fix any of your problems and my problems. This God, he sent his only begotten son, 
John 3 verse 16 the God who created sent his only son to come and die for what he had created for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son well that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life whether it's a young man or whether it's an elderly man whether it's a young lady it's an elderly lady whether it's a middle-aged lady whether it's a middle-aged man God is saying I love you I made you I'm willing to take you back anybody here who says I want to acknowledge God is the creator I just want you to stand with me. someone who says I want to acknowledge God is the creator from the evidence of the Bible we've already seen that this God he has created this God who has created the whole world his arms are open church doors are open he said, I want you to acknowledge me as the creator. Is there anybody who say, my life, if he is the one who designed me, I want him to redesign me. Because sometimes I've watched pornography at night and nobody has seen it. Sometimes it's even on my phone and nobody has access to my password. Just say, God, I want you to, to recreate in me a clean heart, oh God. I cannot forgive, but the God who created can recreate. Is there anybody like that? I don't know. I just said one or two problems, but there could be many others. Who just wants to say, preacher, pray for me. Tonight, God can recreate. Amen. Anybody else? I don't want to close you up. Anybody else? Acknowledge God as creator and recreator. God, our Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for the attendance. We thank you, Father. We want to pray that as we are pray tonight. That we may bring somebody who is struggling under the sound of my voice. Somebody who has been not understanding creation for a long time. Somebody who has been bombarded with all the theories that do not tell of the creator God. That Lord you would rewire their brain and rewire their thinking. That God you may transform their minds and their thinking. You may transform our thinking. Oh God there is somebody here who is crying and saying Lord I need you. Every hour oh Lord I need you. Somebody is crying about something that is broken in their life that needs fixing somebody is here lord that is saying i've got a loved one who is ill god i need you to recreate in them good health god you have created and you care for us you who have created god we know that you are father oh yes lord you have given us jesus only through him we access you the father the bible says he who has seen me has seen the father jesus watch over us Tonight, as we live, I pray, O oh Father, that you may go with us. May your presence always be with us. And all this, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. If any of you need any special prayer, or if you have any prayer requests, there's a prayer box here. And there's a question box as well. If you've got questions, please feel free. You can ask some questions, put them in here. So we can answer them tomorrow yeah and there's a prayer box here if you bring your prayer request we will pray for you thank you amen amen Come not, uh, uh, you know, that you come in this number, not because just it's a Sabbath day anyway. So uh, we do expect you to come here tomorrow. Please bring your friends. You little people are very good in, 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 a, in a, you know, children like to come. So bring your mommy and daddies, you know, sometimes they say, I'm tired, but you know, bring them. 
to interview you. And those of you who are here faithfully serving and um, you know, bringing your friends, we have something for you that we would like to share with you at the end of this uh, uh, campaign. Thank you for coming again. If there is any pressing question that you want to ask now, you can ask. I, you know, I want to give the, give the, uh, the, the you know, opportunity to, to ask. If you can wait until tomorrow, you know, uh, we'll do it tomorrow. But again, as I said, bring your friends. It all depends. And thank you for coming because even though you may feel I have not organized, I just showed up. You have done a wonderful thing. You're supported by your presence, and it means a lot. It means a lot to the preacher when he comes and sees you here. You know, it encourages him. It makes him feel, you know, uh, that he's doing something wonderful here. It those, you know, uh, the, the, who, who are trying to make this happen as well, and it's good, good for you. So thank you very much again. I think there will be some refreshments afterwards. Yes, no, no, not tonight. Yes, there will be some refreshments. We are closing now, and thank you. We had a prayer. Have a wonderful evening, and see you tomorrow, seven o'clock. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. God bless. Yeah. <laughs>